slightly different. So right now will be cleaning. Peter is shaving away back at the other.
and I know it's drawing lots to see who gets to choose first, but have a little eye and see what is the best bit of wood because it really makes a big difference um, between first and last place if you get a good piece of wood. Okay, that's got a bit of a knot there, bit of a knot there. Look this way, a few ghosts of a knot, but it's not too bad. Um, but then I look at this piece, there is a bit of a knot there, so that's a problem, but as I'm only turning one leg, I'll take that bit <coughs> from there. Um, so yeah, it really is important to choose the right piece of wood. Okay. Next little bit, get yourself prepared. Admittedly, I've just set this lathe up about 15 minutes ago, but really spend a bit of time getting your lathe going nicely. Uh, make sure, I find, you might move this a little bit further up here so you've got a bit more of a spring. Because on a lot of the lathes where I run the courses, you push down and it takes a bit of time for the, for the treadle to come back up again. You're only going to be doing this for about 10 minutes, some people about 20 minutes, but no more than 20 minutes. Um, so you don't have to push on a really heavy lathe for very long, but you want the spring to come back really quick. Okay, so you're ready for the next bit and you, and you can go away. Um, so check that, make sure your lathe is nice and stable. It's not wobbling that way, it's not wobbling too much that way, because you've got a bit more spring there, you don't want it going back that way. Um, make sure your treadle's working okay. Um, I did um, about 15 years ago at the National Forest, we had a, we had a log to leg race. My lathe broke halfway through, the, um, one of the hinges broke, I fixed it, carried on going, still finished within the allotted time. <coughs> Um, <laughs> that's why you're a world champion today. <laughs> I haven't mentioned that at all, have I? <laughs> um, do watch out that that is stuck in the ground properly and really secured. Um, I remember once with, oh, I've forgotten who it was, but we, once we'd finished, we had to sort of sit on his lathe here to stop the treadle going up and down, or stop the treadle going up and down, because it had come loose down there. So make sure everything's nice and tight. Just make it safe for everybody, but also better for you. Um, my shaving horse is over here which is a bit of a no-no, because I've got to do two, three, four, five steps over to here. Put it, put it here, okay? If you've got a chopping block, which I haven't got at the moment, put it here as well. Make it so that your tools can rest there. Don't leave your tools in the box, because you've got to keep putting them back in the box and taking them back out again. All vital seconds. Leave them there so they're ready to go. Normally I would say don't ever leave your tools outside your box, partly because they fall on the ground and they'll go blunt, but two, if you're doing a demonstration and there's, and there's little children around, they'll reach up and they'll put their hands on the sharp bits. And if you're properly looking forward to having a nice race on the lathe, sharpen your chisels up as well so they're beautiful and sharp on all these little ones who put their hands up. Or all these old guys that will just go, how sharp is that? And they go, oh, I can just see, I've got a white thumb so I can see the bone inside, you know. Just be careful. But when you're racing, forget about all of that. Forget about health and safety. Just um, go as quick as possible. Accurately then. Um, so we want to we want to split. One thing I learnt with well the process is as you as hopefully you all know is you start with a log, you split it once, twice. That's where you can save time. If you can split it to exactly the size you need, which is nice and small, that makes it nice and easy. I've seen people turning sort of two and a half inch thick bits. It only needs to be three quarters, seven eighths of an inch diameter, 22 mil, something like that. Are we metric or imperial? Impetric. Impetric, there you go, nice one. Um, so cleave it as small as possible. The smaller it is, the less you've got to do, the quicker you'll be. And if you look at the uh, example leg, it's tiny. Much smaller than the ones that I do. So um, just, um, just, just, just split nice, nice and close to the size. Um, split onto a chopping block, it makes it split nicer. I can see here, shouldn't have chose this one because it's got a split down there. Yeah. But I'm only turning one. I'm not going to try and make them match today. Um, there you go. Oh, one other thing before you start, make sure you've measured the distance between there and there and taken the practice one off. Because that's another little few seconds long. It's all vital, a few seconds. But do have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so split it down. Now I'm looking at this, I could split that in half but I've got two big bits of wood there, so I'll split it much closer to the size that I need. And then if you can, split it down again. There we go. So you can see that is almost the size that I want straight away. God knows if I was doing that again, I would split it again. Let's do that. I might split that. That way. And get a nice heavy 
pallet. Oh, there you go, I've lost already, dear me. <laughs> there we go. So I could take that, saves me a lot of time. Got a horrible notch, should have chosen it a bit better. But I've got two bits, we're about the same size. Job done, okay. What I used to do until last year when I was at the APF and seeing how other people do it is I'd now ax it. Okay, get it round. But um, to be honest, when you're racing, you ain't got time for axing. So shut your axe away and just go straight onto the draw knife. Make sure it's set up right so when you put it in, it's at exactly the right place. Make sure your draw knife is nice and sharp and just get it down. as close to a cylinder as you possibly can. And again, you're only doing two, so you can expend most of your energy just doing it. And if you can, it does really make a big difference getting that as close to a cylinder as possible. Because when you put it onto the lathe, it should have been put on the lathe already. By now I've got to sleep because I'm listening to Jim doing his talk. <laughs> um, there you go. Ready. So you've got a nice little um, billet and I can spin it. And it should be roughly a cylinder. You can get it closer than that, but it's a balance between how much time you want to do there and how much time you want to go on the lane. <coughs> Usually I just throw the draw knife away and then run. But put... That's about the same, about the same size. Um, well, let's go that centering up. Normally, I would just put it on, center it up, and I center up. I don't bother with the gimlet. I just put it on there. That's about right. Put it on here. Is that about right? There you go. I'm away. I'm going to go. Um, I can adjust it. If it's got a bit of a kink, I can adjust it until it's running nicely and then wind in and make a hole. If I put a gimlet hole in straight away, I'm not sure whether that's actually centered. If it's a nice billet, then it probably is. But what I tend to do now is I just do that, cut the twist round, and then I find the center, find the center, and I'm away and ready to start turning. Now you can see that's roughly a cylinder already. Um, if I'm feeling really good, before we started, I put a little bit of oil on either end. It makes a big difference, having a bit of oil on there. I wouldn't bother putting it on halfway through, but it does make a big difference. Oil, not grease. Okay, really, well, anything. Got, a bit of sweat. <laughs> a bit of sweat, well, <laughs> less lube. What I tend to do is, when I do a show, I always forget to take my little bottle of vegetable oil, so I go and find the nearest burger van and get a little bit of oil from there. Um, I know it's food safe, but maybe potentially not vegetarian. Okay. Um, if I'm really stuck, stick my finger in the air. I've got a little bit of wax there somewhere. That'll, that's what I'm making babies rattle. Straight in the mouth. Um, next thing, I want my tools about that sort of height. I'm left-handed, which was great because um, I had Matt Jarvis uh, when I was doing one of the um, log-to-leg races um, at the APF and um, we were on a team together and he's right-handed so he's there ready which what there's no where's the handle he's <laughs> left-handed <laughs> so um, if you're doing the lock to leg race team race do, do just check which way <coughs> the lathe you're working on is anyway whew. so we've got that going if i can get the peg there that's even better i should have done some i should have got that sorted because you can feel it rising up and down so I'll put a peg on there or a block of concrete or pick anything peg it down with a bit of string peg it down bit of string yeah anything yeah. like that yeah. that's better just got a bit just, just a bit more secure how are we doing right so we've got to go in and I find Less is more to start off with. Don't go in there with a massive, trying to take a massive chunk off because it goes flying off. You've got to wait, you've got to go and get it recenter off. So just take a little bit off. The next 
thing I say, it should be that you've got really sharp chisel. I've just been doing a course the last couple of days with a load of teenagers and these are a little bit black. You can see my lathe is wobbling around, that's no good. But that first pass, I've got it a bit down to a cylinder. Now I can start thinking about going on a bit harder. Jim, the other thing you do is put your foot on there. I could do that for you. Yeah. You can have some very friendly people here. <coughs> I need. I know. You know. You're getting on a bit. You need a bit of a rest. I yeah. do. I do. I'll put put your arm there. That's it. So now I can just. I can put a bit more oomph into what I'm doing. And the other ideal is to. Well, someone said, "How do you speed up? How you how you working?" And their answer was, "Put your chisels down quicker and pick them up quicker." Okay. And there's a reason for that. There is a a good reason when we've all got these massively um, untidy workshops it's best to have a very tidy workshop with the four tools that you need and all the other tools are in a, in a nice sort of drawer somewhere it's the ideal believe me my workshop isn't like that and so you can then I've forgotten what the pattern I'm doing is Three beads, Three beads, one beat, right. Okay. Um, I do as much as I can with this one. There we go. Mark up your tool rest. Then you know exactly where all the marks are going to be. And then that one matches everything else. Always put a little mark at the end so you know where the top or the bottom of your chair leg is. So then if your billet is, is, is sawed at an angle, and they're different lengths, you know you start at one end and so they're gonna match. You have a secret sign. You are doing very well. Doing very well, thank you. Um, so that's all I need to do with the big gouge. So I can put it down and never pick it up again. We can then use the scooters. Everybody likes the scooters, don't they? Um, make sure you know what you're doing with the scooters. I find it easier. Let me think. One, two, three, four. That's going to be my three beads. I'll use the tip to do that. And we've got those roughed out. Then I can flip it over. Turn it round. Turn it round. And take some time with the beads, get them nice and even, because that's where you're going to lose marks. And it is accuracy, as well as, flip that over, as well as speed. We had long discussions into the night, the night before the competition, about the rules at the APF show. I gave them loads and loads of my homebrew cider. I didn't drink a lot myself. Um, so that's the beads done. So now all we've got to do is just make it look nice. And because you've done a lot of work with the with the big gouge, it's just a question of getting it right. <coughs> that to me is the hardest bit, getting that one right whether you want to go flush straight in and then do a bead or whether you want the bead to come up go in and then do the same diameter as you're turning i like it to stand proud but i can't remember also i haven't looked at the um, example chair leg cool. that's one i don't i can see a little problem there so i'm just going to bring that back have a chance to catch up with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shine on it will glitter against the judge's eyes so he, they won't see what, what he has done. Absolutely. 
And then, um, and one time I did, after that, I, I was so pumped up, grabbed my legs, ran to the table, and they said, have you got your bag? So make sure your bag is there with your little number. So you run back, put all your things back in, run back over, and try and knock the other person that's running across at the same time out the way, and put them back there. That's how you do a chair leg. Mm. That's it.